So one thing I get asked a lot is what tools do I carry on a daily basis and kind of what's my setup. Um, I guess to start everything off, you really need to start off with your tool bags. I got a pair of Occidentals. I use the uh, kind of fabric or whatever nylon I think is what it really is material. Uh, I live in the Pacific Northwest, so it rains a lot and leather tends to get pretty damn heavy with all the water. So uh, let's hop right into it. Obviously, you got to start off with a good tape measure. I love these Stanley Fat Maxes. I actually really, really like the ones that have the self-locking feature. Just comes in handy, but that's personal preference. I normally get at least a 30 to 35 footer because, well, I'm normally a framer and working with those heavy beams all day and glue lamp, you know, stuff gets pretty long sometimes. And, uh, well, this is my favorite razor blade I've used like of all time i just love it i mean you can tell this thing's obviously been beat up quite a bit i just love it because uh you know everything stays nice solid and true i bought other dewalt razor blades and they just they feel really clean you know clunky and also uh just really cheesy you know joints and stuff stay wobbling and all that and uh you know this guy right here also has quite a bit of storage for i think five maybe six extra blades so there's what uh what kind of razor blade i like using i just stash that little guy right there next thing is i use impacts quite often and half the time when i'm doing hold downs you know for sds's and such half the time you can't really get in there without taking out studs unless you have one of these bad boys so i normally carry that guy around just because it's pretty light and uh really comes in handy when you need it and uh just stash that little guy right there next gotta have a good torpedo obviously stabila kind of the only way to really go there i put a little bit of uh blue tape on the bottom just because when i'm working with finished material i don't want to mar it up and scratch it all to hell because this has a magnet on the bottom but uh yeah this is the torpedo that i like to go with just pop that little guy right there I know a lot of you guys don't have these exact bags and you know i'm a little biased with my tools i believe you know tools don't make the worker but they will make your life a hell of a lot easier and i'm a tool guy uh for a long time i was carrying around you know just a typical set of linemans and obviously linemans are a great tool to have you can't really ever really replace them uh when you really need them like tying rebar and such uh, and they're just kind of a universal tool. You can do just about anything with them. You got to use it as a hammer, bam, right there. Uh, but recently I bought these Knipexes or Knipexes. I don't know exactly how you guys pronounce them. But uh, yeah, I'm not exactly 100% sure what they're really called. I call them carpenter's pliers. But these things work freaking fantastic for pulling out little finish nails where you can't really get a good grip on them with your linemans because, you know, those have a little gap right there. Uh, I believe these are actually specifically for tying rebar, these specific ones. But uh, yeah, these kind of have re replaced my, uh, my linemans in my bags as my, you know, everyday carry. I'll just kind of shove those guys right there. Um, so next thing, I normally have about three carpenter's pencils that I carry on me at all times. You never know when someone's going to need one or you need them as a... You know just a little bit of a shim or something they're about quarter of an inch so they come in handy all the time especially when setting windows and uh i'll just pop two long ones right there you know bam bam and then i normally have a little one and i'll keep it closer right there to where it's easy for me to pull and along with that i will also normally carry a nail set or a punch whatever you want to call it and that will go right next to it just for ease of access um yeah i also will keep a sharpie with me you know sometimes you gotta especially being a cut guy you gotta label stuff nothing labels quite as easy and as uh easy to see and such as a sharpie so i'll keep that guy right there push that one down because again i'm not normally the cut guy um another thing that i like to carry on me is a nice six inch or three inch uh quarter inch hex extension I really prefer the locking, you know, uh, rather than just a magnetic. 
like I said, I do a lot of SDSs for hold downs and such. So you really want that stuff to lock in. Magnets don't really hold very well when it's under high, high torque applications. And uh, that guy, I will actually put in the right hand sides. So kind of just right here or so. And it actually looks like I already got one in there. But yeah, I'll just put that guy right there. This pouch I normally use for the nails or screws that I'm using at any given time. So if I'm doing hold downs, all my SDSs will go in there. If I'm doing hangers, all my you know little Ticos will go in there. Um, yeah. Another thing I get a lot of shit on all the time is I normally carry two cat's paws. Can't tell you how many times where you know I've had to leave something pried up for a little bit, go to the other side of you know a glue lamb or just even a wall uh, for like framing, and you know I'll just slide my my uh, my beater cat's paws, what I like to call it, underneath one side, and then I'll go to the other side and. Let's say I have a nail that I accidentally, put, or that I put in that I now need to pull. I still have another catch ball. And uh, I'll keep those guys right here in the back on my left hand side. I'll put the shorter one, you know, right here. And actually on my, my original set of oxidinals that I bought, I actually put a little piece of PVC pipe right here and just attached it with some zip ties. And uh, that's because some old time framers that I used to work with um their cat's paws would get really beat up about right here and it actually would start cutting into the leather so in order to prevent that from happening they just put a little piece of pvc on there and then my longer one i'll put right here and uh if you couldn't tell that's martinez if you don't know about them go check them out great brand um i have a bunch of other martinez tools right here actually and you know, I've, I've been rocking this hammer right here for about three and a half, four years now, and I've never looked back since. I've ran this damn thing over with my truck. I've, you know, held up 900 pound glue limbs with it. It's just an amazing tool all around. And uh, yeah, I beat the shit out of this thing and she's still holding strong. That's why this right here is basically my everyday carry. And I keep that guy right there up front. But my Occidentals. And uh, another thing, I normally carry an M79 Martinez in my back because you never know when you're going to need a sledgehammer. Like I said, I do a lot of uh, heavy timber framing, otherwise known as post and beam most of the time. And uh, a big heavy or heavier hammer really comes in handy sometimes. And uh, I'll just put that guy right there in my back so it's kind of not in the way really. Um, Another thing is I know this this build that I do is pretty heavy and uh, I don't recommend it for everybody, but I'm pretty young and I'm still strong, so it doesn't really matter much. Um, next thing, Martinez Speed Square. As you can see, I was uh, doing some hardy for a little bit and you know, I use this thing for scribing when I'm the cut guy. And uh, kind of started wearing off a little bit of the marks, but you know, if you know how to read a square and you know how to read tape, you can tell where an inch and a half or five and a quarter inches is. So it's not that big of a deal. But uh, yeah, I definitely wouldn't probably use a hundred and two hundred dollar freaking speed square for doing hardy ever again. But I can't tell you how much a speed square has actually sped up my productivity when I'm doing scribes. Don't have to really pull out a freaking chalk box anymore as long as I got this guy in my bags. So that's why that's another one of my everyday carries. She goes right there. So last square I'll carry is actually a little micro Martinez. I actually just got this guy and haven't really gotten a chance to bring her out yet, but I know it'll come in handy big time when I'm doing uh, blocking, you know, inside of already pre-existing walls where plywood and everything is already up. Half the time you can't get a full you know, seven inch speed square in there. So a little, you know, four and a half, five inch speed square will really, really come in handy. And uh, I'll probably just throw that guy right there, honestly. <clears throat> There's a few other tools that I carry around, but not on an everyday basis. Includes a spud wrench. I use this guy somewhat often when I'm doing, uh, you know, bolts for the glue lambs and such. But again, it's, it's not an everyday carry. Just because half the time, you know, you can pry stuff over with your hands and, you know, just a cat's paw and a hammer and whatnot. Uh, 
another tool that I love having, but again, don't carry it on me every single day, um, is the Kanipex, and I believe these are the Cobras, having that locking uh, jaw on it, really, really comes in handy. Actually, most of the time I use these guys, it's, uh, it's not even really on a bolt, it's just on something that I just, you know, normal freaking set of vice grips won't really fit on very well or just not a whole lot of room to actually clamp down really well so those Kanipex cobras really really come in handy kind of uh another another Kanipex brand is uh these guys i'm not even sure what these guys are really called i use these all the time though when i'm doing bolts or anything and i don't want to you know mar up or knurl the uh bolts or the nuts uh you know if it slips it's not really a big deal because it has smooth jaws Let's see if i can do this right quick it's smooth on the inside and actually if you notice when you're closing it, it actually or when you're squeezing it it actually closes up a little bit so it actually gives you a little bit of extra force to really really hold on to those uh bolts and nuts really well um, another tool that really comes in handy, I've actually used these more or less, uh, more often than not, just to, uh, actually, believe it or not, get, um, SDS roto hammer bits out. I've gotten a few of them stuck, and nothing really works, you know, uh, better than putting a vice grip on your freaking SDS, and it, you know, sometimes it'll ruin the, the bit, but you can always go buy another one. It sucks having a hole that you drilled can't get any you know and your bit breaks or whatnot and you can't get it out so you know what i like to do is pop those guys open clamp it onto your bit and then uh build up to that with some wood and you know that's guys obviously clamp down on that bit and you know with the wood you can put it like a uh burk bar on it and then just slowly work it up by prying that's actually what i use those are more or less for but again not an everyday carry and then uh, another set of Cobras. These are the little, little guys. I don't really use them super often unless I'm up in you know, like an attic space or in a crawl space below. And uh, there's no real room for me to get into places. Um, we've got some more, you know, just little fat maxes and whatnot. Those are, in my opinion, the best tape measures that you, money you can really buy. Every time they go on sale, I buy one. That's why I have six or seven of them just laying around in the truck. They're just, you know, they're great tools. And living in the Pacific Northwest, you're going to go through a tape or two every year because of, you know, water and rust and whatnot. So really, really good and important to have extra ones. Um, that's also another reason I don't really use chalk boxes too much because as soon as those lines get wet, you know, they, uh, they, they, they get all gunked up with the chalk and they don't really work anymore. Um, I really like this Wisp brand for you know sheet metal work and flashing work these things are just amazing I haven't really used them too too much only have used this specific brand a few times but really really good and actually these are the midwest not wis sorry about that but yeah these are the wis i believe yeah these are wisses and i've used these guys quite a lot um only complaint i really have is this locking mechanism mm, it, it'll uh I don't know what exactly happens, but it won't really lock because you won't be able to get it up past that screw. But other than that, damn good tool. Um, just a little beater speed square that I have. I actually have like four of these guys. They're one of those tools that, uh, you know, sometimes gets beat up a little bit. You know, you get onto an, uh, like a scissor lift or a boom lift and sometimes, well, not sometimes, a lot of times your speed square will fall out and that's where I'll switch out the Johnson for the, you know, Martinez I got there because I don't want to drop that guy off of a, you know, 50 foot boom lift and break it. So that's where I'll switch off to a little Johnson. You know, I break this guy or I bend it. I'm not too worried about, you know, going out and having, you know, a $12 speed score go, go bad on me because it dropped. So that's why I'll carry that guy with me sometimes. And, uh,. Yeah, that's that's basically my everyday carries. Um, every once in a while, I'll switch over to you know, also using these two guys right here. Foreman calls, you know, one of my journeymen or foreman calls this guy a hive tool. 
Not sure if that's the real name for it. I call them flat bars. Uh, but this thing is amazing for doing trim work. And, you know, if you really need to get into a tight space and price something off, this thing is awesome. And then uh, this right here was actually, I believe, my very first cat's paw I ever bought. I, I really like this little DeWalt guy. It's pretty light, so it doesn't really add a whole lot of weight to your bags. And also, it doesn't really stick you in the legs very often. Um, this is the future I love about it, though. When you're working on, you know, exposed uh, material and such, this guy, you can actually put like that over your nail head, hit it a couple of times, and it actually leaves a little indent around the nail hood and the wood. So that way, when you go to put, you know, your uh, cat spot in there to actually get that out, you can put it inside of that little indent, and it won't splinter out the wood as bad. So... I really like this guy, but it's not used a whole, whole lot. And uh, one more feature that I wanted to show you, or thing that I've added to my bags, is uh, I mentioned I work on scissor lifts fairly often. This little guy is called a spider tool holster, and that thing is freaking awesome. So basically, that little guy will connect to this right here that's on your uh, drill or your impact or whatever you decide and it basically will lock it into place just like that and uh, you know it'll stop it from falling out of your bags there's a total I believe of two positions so right now it's in the lock position basically it slides in there on that little knob and it locks in place so that's not going anywhere and then when you want to grab it all you do is use your little middle finger or whatnot, pull it up, and your tool will come right out. Um, most of the time I leave it in the lock position. It doesn't really cause that big of a problem, but you can also leave it in an unlocked position to where your tool will go in and out with ease. But like I said, that kind of defeats the purpose of what I use them for. So that's basically my setup of my bags and how I like to carry them. Again, everything is... Uh, moving around a little bit so you know tools sometimes change and whatnot i'm still rocking a stiletto smooth face for when i'm doing finish work and uh yeah my ball peen for when i'm working on my truck so yeah this is what i like to carry around on me on a daily basis